So we've been working with this thing for a little while and a very good question was asked. How did I go about making that bit in the centre, the Archimedes screw bit? Well, it's a surprisingly easy thing to do in Tinkercad. So let me show you how I did it. So here we are back in Tinkercad and to do this we need to create our basic shape. And we take a block and then we'll make that something relatively random, 60 by 1 by 1, and that's actually our basic shape. Now in order to get this so we can use it, we need to export it, and we export it as an SVG file, not an SDL file. Once you've exported that, then we can go to the search shapes, and if we type in SVG, the first thing we'll have is SVG Revolver, and we've used that before when we made various aerofoils in a circular shape. Right next to it, you'll find SVG Helix. Drag SVG Helix into the work plane, and you'll get all these boxes that you can alter, and there, where we need to put the file we just exported. So if we find that file and drag it into there, and it will create that Helix for us. And as you can see, it's actually wrong in that it looks like a ribbon, so we need to make a change to that. And to do that, we're going to use some settings in this box here. Let's change sketch height to two. Number of sides maximum. Sketch rotation, which is the original sketch we put. Let's swivel that round by 90 degrees. And then the number of windings, we actually only want one winding, but we needed to go one eighth of a bit further. So it's 1.125, and that will create us one and an eighth winding. Now if we zoom out so we can see the whole shape, there we is, there's our basic helix. And we can see that it's about 250 by 250. What we need to do then is copy it. Copy it and rotate it around the base by 120 degrees. And then repeat that. Now we duplicate merge all of those just by highlighting them and hitting the merge. And we get our basic helix shape. Now we want to lift that off the ground a little bit. So where it says zero, type in 10, that'll move it a centimeter up. We need to create another shape. So close this, take a circle, make that 250 by 250. by 10. Smooth out the sides, and then we need to line those two up. Hit the align key and line it to the circle that you just made. Later that will be very useful, but right now all it does is give us a reference center for later on, and we'll see why I did that in a few seconds. What we need to do now, of course, is make a cone. In order to make a cone, we use the cookie cutter principle. So drag an actual cone. And remember, this was 250 by 250. This is about 250 by 249, somewhere around about there. And we want this one to be as big as that. So let's make that, say, 200. And that 200. And that 200. And what we get is that cone with this angle here, which is dictated by how tall we make it. So if we make that even taller, we'll obviously have a narrower angle. If we make it even shorter, we'll have a wider angle. We're going to use this angle. Now what we want to do is make that into a hole. Now we've got our cone, we want to make the outside bit. So take another cylinder, and this time, just quickly check here. Remember this is 250 and its height is 298. So the first thing we need to do is change some of these. So we need that to be bigger than this. So let's call that 260. And we'll make that one 260, so it's still cylindrical. And then the height of it, we're going to make 300. Smooth it out. 
and then we take the cone and the cylinder and align them to each other. Merge them. Once they're merged, make it a hole. And here we have our basic cookie cutter. What we're going to do now is cut this out. So we need to raise this by 10. So it doesn't cut out the circle. Press the shift key, click that one that we merged before, center them, and then merge them. Now we need an axle in the center, which is why we did this. Because if we removed that circle, we'll find that this is not quite spherical anymore. You'll see it's 180 by 177. So if we tried to center an axle to this, it would be off slightly. We need to center an axle to the radius of that circle, so it's actually in the center of rotation. So again, take another cylinder, smooth out the sides, and if we check the height of this, we can see it's 177. So let's make this 180 high. And we'll make it 10 by 10. And these are just random choices that you can play around with to get what it is that you want. Then if we center it by holding down the shift key and clicking the bottom circle this time. And we can center to that bottom circle. You see it's just a bit too small, so let's raise it up. Now we can get rid of our reference circle by deleting it, and we can merge those two. And if we zoom in, there we go. We've got our perfect helix. Three blade, one and one eighth turns, ready for our wind turbine. So that little procedure works great for making Archimedes screws for something like a water turbine, for example. But you might have noticed on the original drawing in the wind turbine, there's an angle to the bottom of the turbine blade, around about 15 degrees or so. But the thing about SVG Helix and SVG Rotate is it will do exactly the same job with any SVG file that you want to put in there, including airfoils and angles. Here we are back at the original helix where we used that flat design. To get the angle in there, we need to jump down to our original drawing, and here's the one that we used for the SVG. And now we want to rotate that by the number of degrees that we want, and let's say 15 degrees. Once we've got that to 15 degrees, we can re-export it again as an SGV file. And now if we go back to our original drawing, which is the SVG helix we created, and we find that SGV file with the angle that we just did, and pull that, it will overwrite the original one that was in there with the new one with the angle. It's very much smaller. And if we have a look at that, what we can see is that we've got our 15 degree angle. Of course, there's an issue with it in that it is very much smaller. And you'll notice the inside diameter is also a bit too big. So we can reduce that inside diameter to one. And then we can export that, but this time we export it as an STL file. You'll notice it's 16 millimeters by 16 millimeters. We can then re-import that SVG file. And it will ask us the scale percentage. Let's increase the scale percentage by a thousand percent and import it. And we get something much more the size that we want, being 160 millimeters by 160 millimeters. And that now has the 15 degree angle on it. And we repeat the previous procedure and we'll create a turbine with the 15 degree angle. And there it is after we'd followed that procedure and we get exactly the same, but this time we have a 15 degree angle to it 
like in the original. And if you want to change that angle to something steeper, just change the angle to something steeper. So there you go. Now, I think that was surprisingly easy, courtesy of Tink Academy. We only used two primitives, that was the cube and the SVG helix. The other technique we used was the cookie cutter to get exactly the shape that we wanted. And of course, all of those dimensions are just the dimensions I used for this. Experiment with them if you want something different based on that basic design. Of course, it would be great for things like marble runs, great for things like Archimedes screw water turbines, but it's easy to do once you use something like SVG Helix. So I wanted to share that with you. I hope it was of interest. Thank you very much for watching.